You might have some spare money lying around, but you're not quite sure what you should be doing with it. You've heard of people becoming overnight millionaires from investing into companies like Tesla and Nvidia, but you're not quite sure where to get started. Investing seems really complicated and potentially very risky as well. What if you lose all of your money if your stocks go to zero? During this video, I'll show you everything there is to know about investing in the stock market from figuring out what stocks you should be buying, finding the right brokerage platform, and of course, a step-by-step -step process of how to actually buy your own shares of a company. So firstly, you will need a brokerage platform. This is where you'll buy and sell your stocks. When it comes to finding the right broker, there's a whole variety of different options available. Of course, these vary depending on which country you're living in. In the local New Zealand investing apps include Sharesies, Hatch, and there's also Stake, which has crossed over to Australia. Then there's also larger American platforms like Interactive Brokers, and that's personally the one that I like to use because it has very, very cheap fees in comparison to sharesies. So you can potentially save a lot of money in the long run because you're not having to pay as much money whenever you're buying or selling your stock. So for this example, we'll be focusing on the interactive brokers fixed pricing since that's the most accessible to the majority of people and it's a lot easier to calculate the fees. So if we compare the cost of investing a thousand dollars into Nvidia between sharesies and interactive brokers, it's easy to see that interactive Interactive brokers is a lot cheaper. So firstly with shares is you have to pay a foreign exchange fee. Now this is the cost when you convert one currency to another. So if you're depositing your funds in the New Zealand dollar onto shares is you have to convert them into the US dollar because Nvidia is an American company. So for that you'll be charged a fee of 0.5%. So that initial $1,000 is going to become $995. And then after that you have to pay a flat brokerage fee of 1.9%. So for sharesies, there is a cap or a maximum fee that you'll be charged for buying an American stock and that's five US dollars. So for this investment, the total amount that you'll have to pay is $13.50 between the brokerage cost and the foreign exchange fee to invest $1,000 into the Nvidia stock. In comparison to interactive brokers, which charges a max foreign exchange fee of two US dollars, which is $3.30 NZD, and then to make the investment, it's only going to be a one US dollar fee. So that's about $1.60 NZD. So the total cost is $4.90 NZD to invest $1,000 into Nvidia using Interactive Brokers, which is about half the cost in comparison to Sharesies. Now, Interactive Brokers, that brokerage fee will remain the same, even if we wanted to buy 20, 30, or 50 shares of Nvidia. So you can buy a lot more shares with Interactive Brokers for a cheaper, overall cost. So that will really help to save you a lot of money in the long run. Cutting down those fees is a great way to pick up your investments and that's money you can be putting back into the stock market to help grow a better portfolio instead of having to spend it on fees. So once you have your brokerage platform selected, what should you consider investing in? So there's two main options when it comes to the stock market and this is ETFs and individual stocks. Now we'll start with ETFs and that is just an exchange traded fund. It's basically a collection of multiple companies all put together into one particular investment. So you can have ETFs that will track a specific sector in the market like healthcare or finance and then there's also ETFs that might look at specific investment types like dividends or high growth companies that are potentially based in the tech industry and then you can have ETFs that will track a specific index that will follow a country's whole stock market. So in New Zealand you have the NZX top 50, in Australia the ASX 200 and then of course in America the most notable one is an ETF that will track the S&P 500. Now ETFs are great because they can potentially give you a far more consistent return but the profits aren't as big. You won't become an overnight millionaire from investing into an ETF. On average an ETF like one that tracks the S&P 500 will typically give you a return of about 10% per year. Now of course this is past performance and it doesn't always indicate future performance but the S&P 500 has been providing that kind of return for over a hundred years. Now some years it might only go up two percent, it might go down ten percent but in the long run across multiple decades say 10, 20, 30, 
40 years plus, the average return that you can potentially expect based on the previous year's performance is about 10%. So then there's also individual stocks. Now these are where you can potentially make a lot more money. You have more control over your investments with ETFs, all your money is spread out amongst all the companies in that ETF. And some ETFs might have over 500 different companies all put together. So an individual stock, there is a better potential for a greater return. If you look at high growth companies that are very popular, like Nvidia, it's gone up 136% in the past six months. Of course, not every stock is going to provide this return, but some stocks can be very popular and give you a very, very high profit. It depends a lot on their popularity and more often than not, high growth, newer stocks based on things like tech or AI have a better potential return. Tesla through 2020 had a massive run going up over 800 percent in about a year and now it looks like nvidia is creeping into that slot through 2023 and 2024 but who knows how long the stock will have this run it does depend a lot on people's perception and the popularity of the investment that can really help drive up the price so keep in mind do your own research don't just follow what everyone else is doing because you have to understand what you're investing in and where your money is going to make sure that you can keep it as safe as possible there can also be much larger drops in share price when it comes to individual stocks so it depends on risk versus reward etfs typically have a more consistent return they don't really have big ups and downs in their share price value so now we'll go over the process of actually buying some shares of a company using a brokerage platform so for this example we'll be using interactive brokers it's a really great platform that's available in over 33 different countries including australia new zealand the united kingdom and america as well it lets you invest in etfs stocks cryptocurrency precious metal foreign currency there's a whole variety of different options that it has available if you want to branch out and take a look at some other investment opportunities so for this example we'll be going through the process of buying some shares of apple so first of all go to the top of the home screen and then search the stock that you want to buy type in apple and then it will pop up at the top for you so once you click on the stock and it'll show you a whole lot of detailed information about that business and then there's also also a whole lot of options to display the stock graph. You can view the stock graph across different time points, say days, months, or years. So this will give you a good perspective on the performance of that stock over time. You can also view the graph in a whole lot of different options, but the one you'll most likely be familiar with is a line graph or a candlestick graph. So then when you go to buy, there'll be a few different options as well. So we'll be going with a market buy order. And this is where you're just buying that stock at the current market value. So at the moment, so when you're doing the investment, you can do it based on the amount that you're investing, the number of shares. And if you only wanted to buy $50 worth of Apple stock, you can do that as well. So you can buy fractional shares of the company. You don't have to buy an entire share if you don't want to, because for some people putting in $200, $9 for something like Apple stock might be a lot of money initially. So if you're just getting started, you can put $20, $30 or $50 into that company. So in terms of topping up your account, there's a few different options. You can do a bank transfer. You can top it up with your Wise card as well. It varies depending on the country that you're in, but depositing money onto the platform is very straightforward and there's nothing complicated about it. Once you've done that process a few times, it becomes very easy and can be done in just a few clicks. Initially, it might seem complicated, but once you get some experience with it, it, it can be easily done and it becomes second nature. When it comes to investing, it's important to know all the extra features that come with a brokerage platform. So if you want to see a complete guide on how to use interactive brokers from setting up an account, selecting the right stocks and some tips and tricks to take advantage of all the features interactive brokers offers, make sure to check out this video on screen to get a complete guide to the platform.